Hello, and welcome to another edition of Financial Fridays with Dawn. So today we have a lot going on. I'm going to be talking about the psychology of money, how to actually make your money last longer in retirement and leave a legacy. Then we'll go over the slot report as well as the slot mailbag. And just a few things I want to point out. I have a couple of events happening. One on April 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I, David McKnight is going to be doing his flagship presentation on how to retire in the 0% tax bracket. So if you are interested in that, please reach out to me via email and I will send you your personalized link for that. Again, that's April 9th. This is he's going to be doing these live every quarter. Um, they will not be recorded. So you definitely want to jump on to that. And then also I will have some investment series webinars coming up too, which will be at 12 p.m. noon. Now those I will be recording, so be sure to read your emails and look out for that. Um, and with that, let's get started. So first I wanna talk about how to make your money last longer. Um, Ernst & Young did a study a few years ago and their findings revealed that to have the most retirement income when you retire is, you wanna do this ahead of time, is you wanna have 30% of your assets into a deferred income and annuity with increase in income potential. This leaves you with the most income. And then you also combine that with 30% towards permanent life insurance. And that also helps you leave a legacy, leaves the largest legacy. So I wanna take a look at that report in further detail. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. Okay, so it is called the benefits of integrating insurance products into our retirement plan. And this is what I do with all of my clients. Um, so let's just see. I'll just point out the main points here. Okay, so point number one, permanent life insurance plus investment strategies outperform if you invest only in the market and buy term and term and invest the difference. A lot of you have heard about that. So as we could see, right here. So putting 30% into a permanent life insurance policy and then the rest in investments. And again, you have to be all in on the market then being 100% devoted to stocks because bonds are being replaced by the permanent life insurance and or the um, deferred income annuity with increase in income potential. So as we can see here, if we do that 30% to the permanent life insurance and the rest in investments, we have $62,500 in retirement income versus just doing investments only. And then we also have left legacy. So that's the first one. Second one, if we do a deferred income and annuity with investments, we outperform all other strategies for retirement income. As you can see here, 30% to the annuity yields $66,250 of income versus just investing in the Investments only, where that's $61,250 a year of income. And also, we have a, a larger legacy, and we also have a 90% probability of success. Because what you do with this is when the market is down and you retire, like when you're in re accumulation uh, mode, nothing, sequence of returns is not a risk to you. But when you retire, sequence of returns risk is huge. And it's all a matter of luck. So what sequence of returns risk is, is the order in which um, the market returns. So for example, let's say you retire and then for the first three years of your, your retirement, you experience negative, negative numbers in the market. Well, you're gonna run out of money. If you receive those three negative years in the end of your retirement, you'll be okay. So how do we handle this? We have, we go to our other buckets, the annuity or the life insurance. So for example, in 2022, the market was down. So if you're retired the following year, 2023, you're going to leave your money in the market and you're going to take out your income that you need for your basic expenses from your life insurance and your annuity. And that's going to provide your money lasting longer. Um, so that's what this is saying here. You have a 90% chance. Now, um, integrated, oh, wow, just what happened? Everything just closed out on me here. Okay, let's get back to here. Um, so when you combine all the strategies, it, they, they're more efficient than just investment in investment only strategies. Because if you want to plan for a legacy, 
you have that with the life insurance and your income, like I just talked about, is higher when you have the annuity because you allow that money in the market to recuperate after a down market. Um, and yeah, so you basically, these integrated strategies have the flexibility, whether your income is most important to you or leaving a legacy or a combination of both. And like I said here, allocating up to 30% of your savings to a annuity or a permanent life insurance helps you optimizing your retirement income strategies and your legacy outcomes. So this study is done by Ernst & Young. You can go look it up, email me. I will send you a copy if you'd like as well. So that's what I want to talk about there. So now let's talk about, let's go to the Ed Slot report. Um, this was written by Ian Berger. He's on the team at the Ed Slot team. So this is, we're going to talk about the rules for 401k in-service withdrawals. So now obviously the 401k plan is there and should be saved for retirement. But in some instances, you're allowed to access it. Um, but the plans, are they have stricter rules than what the tax code requires. So you have to ask your plan administrator or check your plan summary. Um, so restrictions on withdrawals, each plan, 401k plan, has their own rules and everything. But let's talk about free tax and Roth employee contributions. Generally, 401k plans do not allow in-service distributions for pre-tax and Roth employee contribution accounts before 59 and a half. But you can withdraw from these accounts if the plan allows to it in case of a financial hardship, disability, birth or adoption, and for active reservists. And they will also, plans may allow for the Secure 2.0 Act uh, withdrawals, which we'll see shortly. Now let's talk about after-tax contributions. Plans that offer non-Roth after-tax contributions can allow those contributions and their earnings to be withdrawn at any time, even before 59 and a half. This would be helpful if, you're, if the employees are able to use that mega backdoor Roth strategy to convert their after-tax contributions to their Roth IRAs. So that's a good uh, feature. Again, check with your plan to see if you have that. Emergency savings contributions. Employers can offer lower paid workers a special account within that 401k to plan for emergency savings um, and made on a Roth basis. So withdrawals from these accounts are available at least monthly. Now let's talk about employer contributions. Most plans that allow in-service withdrawals from the employer contributions, which is matching or the non-elective uh, accounts, they follow the same rules that apply to the pre-tax and the Roth employee contribution accounts. So this simplifies the plan administration, but plans can also be more liberal and allow for withdrawals at a specified age, even earlier than that 59 and a half, after at least five years of plan participation or after the contribution has been in a plan for at least two years. Let's talk about for rollover contributions. Now, some 401k plans allow employees to roll over free tax retirement accounts including IRAs into their plan. Plans can allow in-service withdrawals from rollover contributions at any time, regardless of the age or service. But again, it's not mandatory and you have to check with your plan. And the same rules apply to the pre-tax and Roth employee, employee contribution accounts. Let's talk about the Secure 2.0 withdrawal, withdrawals. So the Secure 2.0 adds several new in-service withdrawals that can be made from a 401k account. These withdrawals are for federally declared disaster expenses, a terminal illness, victims of domestic abuse and emergency expenses. In-service withdrawals to pay for long-term care premiums that becomes available in 2026. Now these withdrawals can be taken at any age, but withdrawals for terminal illness are only available if the employee is otherwise eligible for a withdrawal, for example, because of a financial hardship. And note that these plans are not required to offer any of these secure 2.0 withdrawals. Again, you have to check with your plan administrator. Now let's talk about the taxation. In-service withdrawals of pre-tax 401k funds are taxable. And if you make it before 59 and a half, there's, they may be subject to that 10% penalty. A Roth 401k that is a qualified distribution, that comes out completely tax-free. If it's not qualified, the earnings part of a Roth withdrawal is under is taxable under that pro rata rule. And the earnings portion of each withdrawal of a non-Roth after-tax contribution is always taxable on a 
pro rata basis. So hopefully that answered a lot of questions people are having. Now let's go to the slot mailbag report. Again, I was answering these questions. So let's see, someone has a cover, covered all ESA account for their five grandchildren. The question is whether or not the covered all ESAs can be treated the same as 529 plans under the new law when it comes to unused funds being eligible to roll over to a Roth IRA. Well, the Secure 2.0 has allowed um, rollovers from a 529 to Roth IRAs. It does not cover covered all ESA accounts. However, what you can do a 60 day rollover or a direct transfer. I would recommend direct transfers of the covered all account to 529 plans and then roll over any unused funds to a Roth IRA, assuming that you meet all those requirements for a Roth to a Roth IRA rollover, which is basically having the account for 15 years and it can't have been funded for the past pre previous five years and it has the same owner um, and beneficiary. So, I mean, beneficiary. Question, here's another question. Heyman, I need your help. We have a unique situation with a client Paul born, was born December 31st, 1951. He'll be age 73 on December 31st, 2024. If Paul takes a distribution from his IRA in October, will that be considered his RMD since he isn't RMD age until December 31st? Paul's RMD is almost $50,000 and he would rather not double up in 2025. Because um, you know, if you delay your RMD, if you take it the following year, you also have to pay that other year. So that would be too, um, RMDs in one year. So we want to make sure any IRA distribution he takes during 2024 will also qualify as his RMD. And then it goes on to say, okay. So the answer is any distribution taken in the year someone reaches the RMD age counts as the RMD for that year. So if Paul takes a distribution in October or any time in 2024, that counts as a 24 RMD. So those are the questions that we see. Do we have any more? No, those are the two questions there. So we talked about that. Now I want to talk about the psychology. We'll go to Investor Minute. And let's talk about how your psychology affects your investing. So on its surface, investing for retirement seems to be all about getting the numbers right. Your timeline, your tax strategy, your portfolio allocation, and your income goals are all things that can be analyzed and decided on using math. But there's another component to invest in that can have a significant impact on your results. And that's your psychology. How you think yourself, think about yourself in relation to when it comes to investing. In 2002, William Bernstein published The Four Pillars of Investor, Investing. This classic is recommended reading for serious investors and financial professionals alike. The four pillars in the title aren't the basic kinds of investments that you should own, such as stocks, bonds, real estate, et cetera, et cetera but rather the four concepts of investing that are foundational to success. It's history, theory, business, and psychology. 20 years later, when he revised the book for a second edition, Bernstein expanded the section on psychology, noting, it out, noting that it outsized potential impact on the investing returns. To illustrate this, he gives a real life example of two contrasting investors. One was a high profile hedge fund run by two Nobel laureates, and the other was just a personal portfolio of a legal secretary named Sylvia. So the hedge fund went belly up after four years. Sylvia, however, proved to be successful over a span of 67 years. One big difference Bernstein noted was in how the two parties thought about themselves as investors. While the supposedly brilliant people at the hedge fund assumed that they were entitled to large short-term gains, the legal secretary, she assumed she simply would just get rich over time slowly. Um, the VP of Morningstar summarizes it this way. Speculators pursue high returns and investors pursue appropriate returns. He goes on to say that highly educated investors can be more susceptible to the fallacies such as plausible sounding investment narratives, recency bias, giving too much weight to what just happened, thinking it's going to happen again, and believing too strongly in your own investment selection abilities. Of course, being informed about your investments is important, but that knowledge should be balanced by the realization that it does not make you above average in your ability to pick winners and losers consistently and predictably for the rest of your investing lifetime. The most dangerous delusion, states Bernstein, comes 
not from how investors perceive the outside world, but instead from how they view themselves. The prudent investor realizes that when saving for retirement, his or her most probable chance for success will come from pursuing appropriate gains paired with appropriate risk and executed through a diversified strategy. I am happy to help you with a plan designed to achieve your retirement goals over the long term, providing counsel and accountability along the way. So that comes from our investor minute. And I had an example um, this week. I had a client call up because they were looking at a very short time frame, two months, comparing it to the market returns. Well, they did get the market returns, but they're not all in the market. They're in a 75%, 25% equity fixed portfolio. So they only get a certain portion of those returns. And plus, they are globally diversified. Um, so again, when you're looking at the market, you say, oh, how come my portfolio is not doing that? Well, if you're working with a, a good um, investment person, you are going to see that you're not just in one particular segment. Our clients are in uh, like um, about 24,000 unique fixed holdings, about over 12,000 unique equity holdings, all diversified across the globe and managed based for the client's risk. Um, so that's why I'm going to be doing a whole investor series to basically go over my philosophy and what I believe when it comes to investing, which is also supported by academic um, evidence known as evidence-based investing. So I hope you found this week's content valuable and enjoyable. If you have anything you'd want to hear on future episodes, feel free to reach out to me. You can reach me um, on my website, dsfinancialstrategies.com. You can reach out to me by calling my office at 215-660-0288 or email me dawn at dsfinancialstrategiesright.com. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you all. Have a great weekend and see you guys next week.